Okay, so part C, we're going with some more uh, volume problems, but they're a little bit trickier. So this time, um, they're telling us the volume, and we need to work backwards and find the length of one of the sides of the base. And so since we know this is a pyramid, we're going to take the volume that they give us and set it equal to the formula for the uh, volume of a pyramid, okay? So 195.3 equals one third the area of the base times the height. However, I can do better than that because they told me that the height is nine. So it's really gonna be one third times the area of the base times nine. So one third of nine is three. So 195.3 equals three times the area of the base. Divide both sides by three. And 195.3 divided by 3 works out to be 65.1. So that is the area of the base. Now the base uh, is a rectangle. And so I have to find its area by multiplying its two dimensions. You tell us one of the dimensions is 7. The other one is C. That's what we're trying to figure out. And so to solve for C, I divide both sides by 7. Uh, and find that C equals 9.3 centimeters. Okay, number two in part C is pretty much the same, except now we have a cone. Um, they tell us that the volume of that cone is 2,565 cubic centimeters. I'm going to set that equal to the formula for the volume of a cone, which is one-third the area of the base times the height. Once again, I know that the height is 30 just by looking at the picture, so I can substitute that in for capital H. And then one-third of 30 is 10, so 2,560 pi equals 10 times the area of the base. If I'm trying to solve them for the area of the base, I divide both sides by 10. So that means 256 pi equals the area of the base. Well, the base is a circle. So the formula for its area is pi r squared. The pi's on both sides will cancel. And so then to find out what the radius is, I have to take the square root of 256, square root of both sides. And the square root of 256 happens to be 16. So the radius of my uh, base there will be 16. Okay, number three is super exciting. If we have uh, two different cylinders right here, and we need to find the height of those things. And so once again, I'm going to take the volume of the uh, region between the two cylinders that they give us and set it equal to the uh, formula that we would use to figure that out. And what that formula is going to be is it would be pi, and we use big R for the outside circle here, so I'm going to call this distance right here uh, capital R. So it would be pi big R squared H minus, because that would give me the volume of the entire cylinder, minus pi little r squared h, where this distance right here the, uh, it would be the radius of the cylinder that was removed. Okay, So that is a little bit tricky. Um, but now I can plug in some numbers that I know. So 336 pi equals, I know the radius of the big outer cylinder is 8. Uh, and 8 squared is 64, so that would be 64 pi times h minus I know the radius of the little one is going to be 4, and 4 squared is 16, so that would be 16 pi h. Um, these actually turn out to be like terms because they both are uh, pi h's. So 336 pi equals 64 pi h minus 16 pi h would be 48 pi h. And so the pi's cancel. Divide both sides by 48. And h equals 336 divided by 48, which is 7.
So our height there is seven centimeters. Okay, so that uh, does it for all the ones with pictures. Now on the back side, we're going with uh, word problems. Um, so it says find the volume of a cone. Well, we know the formula for the volume of a cone is one third the area of the base times the height. It says it has a diameter of 12 inches and a height of 15 inches. But we don't want the diameter to figure out the area of the base. We want the radius, which would be half of that, or 6. So the area of the base of a cone is a circle. So that's going to be pi r squared. And since r in this case is 6 inches, that comes out to be 36 pi. So now to find the volume of this cone, I need to go one-third times the area of the base, which I've just figured out to be 36 pi, times the height, which is 15. Uh, 3 goes into 36 12 times, and 12 times 15 is 180. So that volume comes out to be 180 pi, and it does not say whether we want it as an exact answer or as a decimal. So I'll give you both. It would be 180 pi uh, cubic inches would be your exact answer. Or your approximation if you multiply that times pi is 566.5 cubic inches. And again, since they didn't tell us which one they want, either one of those is going to be good. All right, we're getting there. Number five, we have a pyramid with an equilateral triangle base. So I'm going to draw that. So there is a equilateral triangle. Here is a pyramid. Okay, and it says it has a volume of 48 root 3 cubic centimeters. The height of this pyramid, so that's from the middle of the base all the way down to the bottom, is uh, 16 centimeters. And so we're going to try and find the length of each one of the sides of the triangular base. So this is going to be a little bit rough. Um, so let's take the volume once again and set it equal to the formula for the volume of a triangular prism, which is one third the area of the base times the height. I know that the height is 16, so I can plug that in there. So one third times the area of the base times 16. So I'm going to, let's see, I guess I'll divide both sides by 16 first. So these 16's cancel, 48 divided by 16 is 3. So that's 3 root 3 equals one third times the area of the base. Now to get rid of the one-third, I'm going to multiply by three. So the one-third and the three cancel. Three times three is nine. I do not multiply this three by the square root of three. I just multiply the two uh, real numbers together. So that tells me the area of my base is nine root three. Okay? So now we're focused in on a equilateral triangle whose area is 9 root 3, and we're trying to figure out what its dimensions would be. So in order to do that, I need to know the height of the equilateral triangle. Well, the good news there is that I cut that in half, and I cut the base in the half right there, and I also get a 30-60-90 triangle, because each uh, angle in an equilateral triangle is 60. So that means that this is going to be x over 2 times the square root of 3. So the area of that triangle using the x's is half the base, or x over 2, times the height, which is x over 2 times the square root of 3. So that works out to be x times x is x squared. 2 times 2 is 4 root 3. So that would be the area of this triangle using just x's. And I know that has to equal the area of the base that they gave us, which is 9 root 3. So the root 3's cancel. Uh, multiply both sides by 4. 4 times 9 is 36. So 36 equals x squared, which means x has to equal 6. So that is a little bit brutal. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, hopefully you can uh, 
I don't know, rewind, go through that a couple more times, and uh, see if you can't figure that out. Okay? Alright, well the good news is that the next one is a density problem, which like I said before, we skipped that section, so we don't have to do that. And so we are done with part C, and ready to move on to the last section, the next video, part B.